All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming out today. Appreciate you taking time away from the, the meat market to join us. Uh, we're going to talk today about improving ROI with call performance marketing. Uh, and with me today, I've got a great panel of paper call experts here. Uh, first uh, is Dan Sweeney. Uh, Dan Sweeney is the uh, director of media services at Commission Junction. Uh, Dan's been in the affiliate marketing space for eight plus years. Uh, and his team currently heads up Commission Junction's pay-per-call program. Uh, down at the end, I've got Don Batsford. Uh, Don is a partner with 31 Media. Don's been in the affiliate marketing space for over 12 years, uh, focusing on social media, search, and mobile. Uh, Don claims that his favorite food is watermelon, but uh, Don, pictures don't lie. Uh, I, I saw you take that burger out in about five minutes uh, from the habit. Uh, and finally, we've got uh, Jeremy Siders. Uh, Jeremy is uh, CEO and co-founder at Web Inc. Uh, Jeremy specializes in search, uh, both online and uh, in mobile. Uh, and has also been in the uh, affiliate marketing space, performance marketing for uh, 10 plus years. Uh, uh, myself, I'm Rob Duva. I am the uh, COO and co-founder at Ring Revenue. Uh, I've been in the affiliate space since 1999 myself, and uh, originally on the advertiser side, and moved over uh, starting Ring Revenue in 2007 uh, to help uh, affiliate marketers uh, track phone calls like they track clicks. Uh, and been at it for a few years now. Uh, so today we are going to uh, talk a little bit about why call performance marketing, why is now the right time for that. Uh, going to talk about who's using it and how they're using it. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the results uh, that the team up here has uh, seen uh, over the past few years uh, within the affiliate marketing space. And uh, we're going to talk to you about how to get started uh, promoting paper call campaigns if you haven't already, or how to uh, improve them. Uh, so just a, a quick show of hands before we dive in. Uh, how many advertisers do we have in the room? Close to half, and the rest are publishers? Yes, publishers? Some technology providers, other vendors? <laughs> All right. Uh, well, hopefully there's a, a little bit here for everybody today. How many, how many are, have promoted pay-per-call uh, in the past? Currently promoting pay-per-call, yes? Uh, a few of you. Uh, all right, well, for those that aren't, we're going we're gonna to help you get started. Uh, and for those of you that are, we're going to help provide some tips and tricks and some, some stats to, to help you along your way. Uh, so diving in here, uh, why call performance marketing? So Dan, you've seen kind of over the last few years that calls and clicks kind of go well together, kind of like that Reese's commercial, two <laughs> great tastes that go well together. Yes. Uh, well, for Commission Junction, uh, you've kind of led the way uh, in paper call here in the States and are now rolling out technology uh, in the UK as well. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, some of uh, the reasons why Commission Junction uh, got behind paper call. Uh, it, I mean, it really was a very natural fit. Um, um, not quite as delicious as chocolate and peanut butter, but um, it, it does make more money. So uh, we're really, uh, going back even historically, we've had a number of campaigns, um, different advertisers who have used uh, call tracking, but uh, in most cases it was on an aggregate per advertiser program. Uh, and they would maybe bonus back or they uh, as a bonus to people or they would uh, incorporate those overall results into their online payout. Uh, it, it was a lot more work. It was not uh, an exact science. Uh, it didn't really allow us to focus on how we could incent publishers to do more of this. Um, it was just sort of an overall benefit to, to the advertiser and to the program as a whole. 
Um, the advent of uh, better technology, uh, the ability to get numbers out to publishers, the ability to have um, uh, ring pools and uh, you know, tie in some of the other uh, really interesting technology pieces that we'll, we'll talk more about here, um, has been a huge boon because now we can really tie together the advertiser to individual publishers and individual promotion methods and really drive quality calls and incent to drive those quality calls uh, for the host of advertisers who convert really well uh, on the phone, uh, more so than online in many cases. Uh, any specific uh, trends uh, within the, uh, the advertising landscape that's kind of driven the adoption? Uh, outside of growth? Um, <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, th th there are a few trends. Um, one is certainly the, you know, increase of uh, mobile in, in, you know, as a general fact, you know, the fact that more people have interactive phones, more people are using interactive phones for QR codes or uh, making calls while they're out, uh, email, et cetera. They do a lot uh, on their phone. So that's been one huge uh, piece, but also the drive uh, to demonstrate that any and all marketing has a positive ROI um, and that you can incent that behavior has definitely improved. I mean, a lot of offline marketing, um, it can be hard to, um, to do that unless you're doing straight VR, and this uh, certainly helps affiliates uh, enable them to get into some of that offline DR and be able to track that discreetly. So Don and Jeremy, uh, tell us a little bit about what life was like before call performance marketing uh, came on the scene there. All right, well, I'll start off here. Uh, you know, before call performance marketing, we were traditional affiliates with some of these firms, um, probably hourly. And in addition, we were uh, a search agency where we would take Client would assign to us, spend it, and then get it. That's the uh, echo of my own voice. So, if that didn't pick up on the mic before, um, traditionally we were affiliates where we were driving calls. Uh, we weren't driving calls, we were just driving clicks to landing pages that advertisers had. And the most heartbreaking part of being an affiliate, and many affiliates have gone through this, is seeing a big phone number at the top of a web page. And when you see that phone number, you know, I'm not going to be compensated for this. There have been many schemes where uh, there have been a percent of these sales that go through the phone number will be given to you, or at some point, they will give you some kind of bonus. They say, we've been seeing a large call volume, and we believe it's from this channel. But the problem is, is it's, it's a, a faith-based initiative. They kind of guess, or it's, kind of, it's some kind of uh, thing where they don't actually know. And that attribution always made it where they were more likely than not to not compensate on those phone numbers. And in many cases, we as affiliates, and many affiliates refer to these as leaks, links or actions that can happen on a page that you weren't compensated on, and that's very heartbreaking. And in many cases, actually prevented relationships where we would see a landing page, we would notice that there's a number of leaks, so we'd start to do a little math in our head about what the ROI is gonna be on the landing page, and we would walk away. we say, we appreciate it. If you can do a, something where you can hide the phone number, in some cases they would, and we'd work with them. You know, we're passing in special URLs. This is a non-ideal situation when you're asking to hide something, you're trying to direct the customer away from what the full experience could be. And so once we saw that we could then say, this is the call we drove, here's what the value of the user was, we should get paid on it, it's a slam dunk for us to work with uh, this in addition to our traditional affiliate channels. Well, and ha having those phone numbers, I mean, on that, page actually does increase um, conversion rates on most landing pages. Uh, it adds an element of trust to a landing page that in many times uh, wasn't there. And so not having it, now all of a sudden if you've got publishers who are asking to remove it because they don't want leakage, now your overall conversion rate on your online forms is suffering uh, just because of this inability to uh, assign attribution uh, on phone leaks. And so, uh, you know, making it a much more holistic approach is definitely uh, a boon to all parties involved. And the, uh, the main reason why we also went toward uh, paper call performance is actually the same reason, which is uh, the leakage that came through and just like investing so much and getting so unsure as far as like how much is actually going toward our sales as web versus how much is going to uh, phone calls, we're actually able to clearly know now, and as um, 
Dan had mentioned, they were kind of estimating before roughly how things were going, and the estimates are great and all, but the thing is what we also found is um, we actually found some advertisers who did really, really well with paper call and for us not so well with web. And we would have never known that unless we had just given it a shot. Uh, the second major reason why we went for paper call also is mobile phones, obviously. Uh, the phone's right there in your hand, people talk, the phone's right there and people call. And basically what we're having is, uh, as I kind of see it, these advertisers and their call centers, it's like they're all working for us. So we're sending calls in and we have a staff, so to speak, trying to make a call, excuse me, trying to make a sale, which would come back into uh, our commission. So actually that's only for the sales driven ones, which we'll touch on later. But um, yeah. So for, for those in the audience that uh, may not have gotten started with pay per call yet, I'll give you just a, a quick overview of some of the dynamics and, and how it works. Uh, it's actually been set up to work in a very similar fashion to the way the, the online uh, campaigns and interactions work between advertisers and publishers. So uh, as a, an advertiser uh, coming in and setting up a pay per call campaign, uh, they go through a, a wizard based process and set up uh, where they want those calls to go and how they want to compensate publishers for driving the, those quality calls into their call center. They make those campaigns available uh, to uh, the network of publishers, and publishers can then go in and apply to promote those campaigns. Uh, in many cases, if the advertiser has a, uh, a campaign that's also running online and they want to add a pay-per-call component to it, those two things kind of work together uh, as one campaign. So it's not calls or clicks. Uh, it's calls and clicks that they're getting uh, compensated for. Uh, well, and Rob, just on that point, I mean, we've actually had really successful affiliates who are driving these calls without one or uh, without the click portion of it. Um, and a lot of that is coming from mobile and the ability to, you know, for people to click on an ad and have it go straight to a phone call. Um, and we found, to much to my surprise, that they would even run ads without a click uh, tag in them, and yet we're still generating a positive ROI. And, I mean, this is not a small amount. This is someone who is making six figures in, in commissions every month. So um, it, was, it was impressive from that perspective. And kind of on that note, uh, Commission Junction had a news release that came out, uh, I think, earlier this year, uh, talking about how advertisers uh, were driving millions uh, in, in new sales and publishers were generating millions in, uh, in commissions. What types of advertisers uh, are you seeing launching paper call campaigns? Um, well, a, a lot of different kinds. I mean, certainly it helps um, if you actually have uh, someone answering the phone. That's uh, a start. Usually, usually a good criteria. Um, so assuming that you have a sales uh, team that uh, wants to get good qualified calls, um, you know, we can do a lot to drive traffic there. And we've been very successful with a few different pieces. Uh, insurance uh, has probably been the single most um, uh, uh, effective or uh, successful model, but we've done really well with a bunch of different services. Home services, uh, such as ADT and DirecTV and Dish Network and um, you know, a host of, of others along those lines. Service Magic would be another one. Um, uh, other services similar to Credit Repair and um, Lexington Law um, have, been, have done really well, especially in this uh, economy. Um, some uh, more like Reputation.com, which is actually one of the few advertisers right now who is paying on a per sale basis. And they're, just to give you guys some amount of scale, they're paying like $400, and it's between $400 and $600 per sale that happens on the phone. So um, that indicates one of the other uh, tidbits, which is these tend to be larger ticket items that people have. It's not always the case, um, but it's certainly an indication that it's worth getting it to a call center uh, and to be able to do that. Um, and then uh, retail has not been as, um, uh, there's not as many people, but we find more and more are getting into it. And we're certainly urging our advertisers to do more and more. Alltrek um, and Advanced Auto Parts have been doing really, really well on that. And we look forward to getting more of those guys up in the next 12 months. Yeah, kind of what we've seen globally is that when the, the consumer price point gets above about $200, uh, 
uh, people tend to have questions. Uh, so they're calling in, can you ship it by Tuesday? Can I get it in stainless? They're not, they're not comfortable committing to that purchase quite online when that do dollar value goes up. Uh, and certainly with those uh, more consultative types of uh, services, insurance and education and those sorts of things, uh, we're, we're seeing a lot of traction on those programs. And the most consultative psychics um, actually does very well. So, um, you know, not high ticket item, but... Is uh, that mostly Dan or Don calling in on those programs? Right, yes. 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 Yeah, I'm going to actually parlay my psychic calls into a lottery kind of feed loop and then become a millionaire that way. <laughs> So, uh, Jeremy, what, uh, what types of advertiser programs are you focusing your promotions on? Well, it's already been touched on a bit, but mostly <laughs> consultative services where the customer needs like a little nudge of sorts to come in and make the, make the order. Um, that's who we tend to do well with the paper call. And also, um, as far as who we look for as a, an affiliate, we like short calls and we like ones that pay well, pretty much. And... Um, <laughs> It just goes as a search. What do you What do you mean when you say short calls? Oh, as short as possible, maybe thirty seconds to a minute. So the the, minimum. the qualification for payout being short. Right, right. Say for example, the call might be require a minute, sixty seconds, as well as maybe press a certain requirement on the phone, like one or two or whatever is required for for the advertiser to get what they're looking for. Um, so. And having that, that gives us more funds basically to promote further and bring in more sales. So that's really important for us as an as a affiliate. And also ones that cover a large geo area, like the whole United States, is also very helpful and also has um, large office hours or long office hours. So that's what we look for as an affiliate initially to go in. Uh, depending on who we work with and how well things convert, we get more specific with them and we also get more aggressive in our promotion, knowing we have a little bit more predictable ROI. And tell me a little bit more about your promotional methods. How are you promoting most of these offers? Uh, right now, we're primarily doing paid search on the web as well as on mobile. Gotcha. And what happens when somebody clicks on one of those paid search uh, ads uh, and may not call necessarily directly from yeah. that ad? Sure. You know, it really varies. We, sometimes we have them come to our page. Sometimes we have them go to a page that's been integrated with the phone number on the site. So they literally can either sign up on the web or call the phone number, and either way we'll get the commission. Or we just have them call directly, and there's no website whatsoever. It just goes straight to a call, a click to call. And when that click-through does go through, if you're sending it direct over to the advertiser's uh, website, uh, you're able to track that call activity uh, that comes from their site as well? Uh, yes, we can for sure. We could track the activity, yeah, with the keyword activity you're talking about? or uh, would Keywords or uh, just in, in terms of that fo your phone number being displayed on, uh, on their website. Oh, sure, okay. So, yeah, basically our phone numbers are displayed. So we have our own unique numbers that's unique to Web Inc. for the given advertiser, and we um, use those numbers and we send them out and we get calls and they're tracked. So, I mean, there's, there's two essential ways that most of the advertisers do that. Uh, one being uh, uh, with a, a simple code integration on their pages where they can uh, dynamically populate. So based on what the click is coming in, the, the phone number on that page and subsequent pages will dynamically adjust to be the number that he has been promoting with. And so there's not much to do on the affiliate side for when you get to the actual site. So that's a, it's a great uh, technology. It speaks to Don's um, concern about leakage and not having leakage so that you have people coming in to do that. But then there's also the ring pools and uh, things along these lines which allow uh, publishers such as Don and D Jeremy to really discreetly track individual keywords by assigning uh, dynamic phone numbers to each of their queries, uh, which then you guys know how to monetize on. So, so Don, how about you? What type of verticals uh, are you spending your time on promoting? So I think, you know, as an affiliate, there's kind of two buckets you initially think when you see a, a new channel like this. And we really do see this as a new channel. Uh, there's new opportunities to promote this. So we think, First of all, we, we wanted to find all of the advertisers that we're currently working with because if you already have a relationship with an advertiser and they have a, a ring opportunity, I'm going to call it a ring opportunity if that's okay, um, 
then you have an opportunity to integrate them into your creative with the phone number or on the landing page. So that's a slam dunk. Existing advertiser, they have an ongoing affiliate program, we want to work with them in ring. So there's going to be uh, no thought process that. Then when you go in for new advertisers and affiliate, you start figuring out, um, does, does the advertiser actually have a good understanding of what the lifetime value of this customer is? So let's take uh, any number of affiliate programs that you've interacted with within your career, and you know that some of them are definitely underpaying for what you're bringing to them. Well, if you're underpaying for the calls, this is really going to destroy any kind of publisher pickup of it because it's really expensive to send calls and you have to test a lot. So what we're looking for is someone who gives us a high percentage of the, the profit margin for this customer, this new customer we're bringing to them. So he's talking about an advertiser that's willing to pay hundreds of dollars. That's going to be a, something that we're, it's going to bring our attention. You know, call duration, although it's, it's important, is not as important as knowing what the actual customer is being asked to put down. Because you know that that conversion rate is already in their head. And when they make a call, you want to make sure that their intention is to stick through. I want all my calls to be 30 minutes. When I, when I send a call in, I want it to be a really long call. I don't want them to be short. But what I don't want is I don't want to have a negative ROI. So if I spend $500 and the CPA is $400, you know, that's, uh, that's never going to make you any money. So if you're representing in the call exchange, here's what this call is worth and you're doing it honestly, then when I go out to buy, that will be reflected because those, that traffic won't be more expensive than the honest um, profit margin is out there in the greater world. Um, when we are, are looking at this, we're also thinking, is this something that someone's going to want to call rather than click? So smartphone, it can't overstate how important the proliferation of smartphone is. 96% of people in the United States have a smartphone. And when you start thinking about the way we have kind of come of age in using the internet, we've done lead generation or we've done sales. But now, when I find myself on the phone, I'm pinching and I'm expanding and I'm moving. And it's very intensive to try to do any kind of interaction that's more than a few fields. If it's one button and it rings, and then they can do a really high value transaction, that advertiser is going to catch my attention. I want to be partnered with that advertiser immediately because I know that there's a higher chance of me getting into that market, getting a piece of it, being able to have a positive ROI than the whole pinching and moving around thing that is required with a lot of um, checkout carts that are happening now with you know every advertiser at this. I mean, there's, a, there's a ton of opportunity with that as well. When you look at um, you know some of the uh, online to offline pieces, geolocation, you know, driving people to actual locations close to where they are, finding tickets, you know, you name it. There's a ton of stuff that's going to happen uh, on that front that's going to be um, really interesting and stuff that we haven't been able to execute on previously and be able to track. So um, there's a lot of uh, good expansion. And again, going back to, you know, the idea of it expanding, Google buying Motorola and just everything happening at a bigger scale with mobile, um, it is much easier to hop on a call uh, by clicking click to call and buy your insurance than it is to fill out an entire insurance form uh, on your iPhone or even your iPad for that matter. So, um, yeah. Dan, we talked a little bit uh, and alluded to some of the, the ways that advertisers are setting up uh, uh, their programs. Can you, you walk us through a little bit more of that setup process for the options that they have available for, for taking calls and configuring within the system? Uh, yeah, I guess I don't want to get too dry on it, but, um, but the, the, you know, I, I suppose there's two um, main ways that uh, advertisers generally set up. One is a more simple way and one is probably a, a, a lot more interesting uh, in the long run. The, the short way is uh, you sign up with CJ <clears throat> and um, then you go in and uh, um, set your campaign up with certain time requirements, geo requirements, time of day requirements. Um, it's relatively straightforward and simple process to walk through with. Uh, most of the time, you need to talk to someone at your company uh, who runs uh, the uh, call team so that you know what a valid call is, but you get some general ideas. You know, if you're on the phone uh, with someone for five minutes, can your sales team have qualified them to either be a qualified user or not? Okay, great. 
And do you want to weed out customer service calls? Okay, great, let's do that. So those are some of the, you know, the obvious examples uh, where you're doing that. So you're essentially paying on the length and key press and various other uh, criteria of the particular call. What we're really interested in, we're glad to see that more advertisers are moving this way, is to work with us on a, a per sale basis. So when their sales team actually closes business on the phone, uh, they're sending us back a file that allows us to identify, based on the caller's caller ID, what transactions were happening um, and when they happen and credit those back to publishers. So in the example of, that I gave of reputation.com, they're, they're actually able to sit there and say, great, here's the 15 sales that happened today. Send those back and we credit those directly back to the publishers. And those are the two primary ways that people are setting up. Obviously, you could do a hybrid of that as well, which is what Lexington Law has done. And Don, for as far as coming into the system as a publisher, can you can you walk through what the experience is there for uh, signing up and starting to promote? Right. So when you are signing in as an affiliate into um, the Ring Revenue system or an, into the call system, you have to have a relationship with um, the network that has the offer. So let's take CJ since that's, we have, that's a good example. Let's take CJ for example, since they seem to be. Well represented. So if you have a relationship with um, uh, CJ, you would also then sign up for their uh, pay for performance arm and they will have a number of offers you can subscribe to. And when you apply to these, you would describe how you're going to promote the offer. And so I would describe you know, some of the channels I would use, whether it be mobile advertising or it be websites that I want to place it on. And you apply and you can go in and in many cases in the networks, you then apply to their their uh, traditional affiliate program too, so the payment system can jive. You know, that's not 100%. And then it's a matter of pulling creative and phone numbers to track. So the system is kind of interesting in that it understands it's all going to be about phone numbers and that you're going to need to modify banners or you're going to, need, going to need to track things uniquely. So with the banners, what's funny is that in many uh, traditional affiliate networks, when you pull a banner, it's like it says, Here's what your banner will look like. Well, the example banner in the ring system is just like one, two, three, four, five. You know, and when you go and create your banner, it will put your number in there, which is your unique number, which nobody else will ever get this. And so then if someone was to see that and never click on it and never do it, they could still pick up a phone just seeing the banner. So if you bought display advertising on a cost per click basis and no one ever clicked on it, you could still make tons of money and you would be, uh, nobody would be essentially um, having to spend as an affiliate, but you would get credit because you're still driving those customers. So as long as there is a, a call to action for that number. In addition, they also have these pull downs where you can give the category of the, uh, where the tracking number is gonna go. You can also put in this field where you want. And when it comes down to it, and I, I always say this, slice up your market into the smallest pieces possible. They have this dy dynamic way they can track keywords, but even if you're just doing things like you have different creative types or you have different um, uh, value propositions you're putting in your ad, to split those up is so important because what you're really saying is, here's what this call is being driven off of this. And if, if you are spending a lot of money driving these, you want to be able to bring it down to line items. Okay, let's delineate this out. You know, this individual ad was, had this ROI on it. Let's cut this. You know, and it's, it's 101 for many search marketers because you're going down to individual keywords, individual creatives. Of course, you're segmenting it out um, based on geo or time. And the same kind of mentality can be brought right into the call system. So for a given campaign, how many numbers uh, would you say that you use to, to promote on average? Well, I don't know if you want me to say that. I actually ask you guys to increase my uh, numbers. Is that something you want me to tell the... <laughs> I One actually, million it, yeah, numbers. No, I, I actually go, there's a, there's a limit. When in you're the, driving the kind of volume that Don is, you can get increases. Yeah, so I don't know. If, we didn't discuss whether I should mention the special. But the thing is, is that um, with the ring pool, you get a lot of numbers because they're, they're doing this system where they're kind of, they're almost disposable and they only, for that instance, they're almost um, session-based numbers. But then there's also these kind of permanent numbers. You, if you were gonna, let's say you were gonna buy an outdoor advertisement, and, like on a billboard on the side of the highway, you, you don't want that to have any kind of lifespan. You want have that you to, bought that yet? 
I have not bought an outdoor ad. Um, but we've talked about, you know, you uh, wanting to have CJ Ventures write me a check, so. <laughs> uh, but I'm willing to go in on an outdoor ad if anybody has a really good idea for one. <laughs> but if you're gonna do something like that, that's sexy, and there's no reason you can't with the systems, then you're gonna want it to be permanent. And these, you get about five standard before you, it depends on the network, but you hit this limit, and then you can call them up, act nice, and they will increase the amount of, you have, so just even kind of your hard and fast, you can get uh, a, a number of ones that you have these permanent long-term goals for that you have 10 or 20 that you're, you're working on these, these really shoot for the moon kind of projects. So there's no reason you shouldn't be slicing on what you do uh, into little pieces. Well, and, is, and is there any cost for you for those numbers? Well, funny you should ask, because you know that there's no cost. And that's the thing. As a publisher, there's really no cost. <laughs> and I know that traditionally, anytime we've tried to drive calls, there's always been the, well, you know, the, these are expensive. You know, watch out how you use this. Let us know if we're going to recycle it, um, you know, next week. It, the people traditionally have been very hesitant to let lots of toll-free numbers go out, because as you all know, toll-free numbers have a cost associated with them, whether that's the actual licensing of the phone number or it's the cost per minute or whatever's gonna happen. Um, they don't want to incur these fees, but the, the ring system makes it very easy to go shopping for numbers. And so, you know, free is hard to argue when you're affiliate. You're like, free, sure, I'll take all of them, boom, 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 boom. And then you just go out and you have a basket full of them and you, you sprinkle them along all the media opportunities you can find. Well, just to get back to his discussion of offline, I mean, there's certainly people out there, um, you know, who are doing print advertising um, and who are doing longer term stuff, um, you know, yellow page uh, distribution, um, print advertising on direct mail pieces and on, uh, and, uh, you know, newspapers. Um, I think newspapers should totally get into this. They're obviously not making money any other way. Um, so, you know, I think there's a lot of other offline capabilities with that as well, uh, including, you know, even further on down the line. It's a huge, it's a huge market to get into. And um, one of the interesting things from CJ's perspective is how this has really brought a ton of new affiliates. Uh, they'd never been in, you know, online affiliate marketing previously, and we've seen tremendous growth. Uh, we went from... Uh, I think we doubled the number of uh, the publishers who are doing paper call year over year. Um, and, um, you know, so we're up at about 22,000 publishers that are uh, uh, working with us on paper call. And uh, not only that, but a huge number of those are totally incremental. They have not previously done um, any affiliate marketing. And CJ's been around for a long time. A lot of publishers are joined with us. so. Uh, when we see that kind of growth, we know that there is a big market out there that these guys uh, are working on and have been able to bring to the table. Yeah, I think you, you shared a stat with us uh, earlier that, uh, that about 40% of calls, I think you said, were coming yep. in, were coming from mobile. Uh, from mobile. Yep. So, yeah, of all the calls that we're driving, the rough estimate is about 40% are coming from mobile devices. Um, so, you know, you figure the other ones are coming from landlines or work or uh, something along those lines, but um, it's, it's been a very substantial growth in the mobile aspect. So let's talk uh, some more about uh, the, the results uh, that we're seeing here. Uh, so Don, maybe you can kind of lead us off here with, for some of your campaigns that, that you're running, uh, what are some of the stats that you're seeing? Yeah, um, so for results, you know, I like to brag, so private <laughs> zoo, that's the kind of results. <laughs> yeah, it's very expensive to feed my hippo. Um, but <laughs> seriously, when you come down to results, it's all about opportunity cost, and as an affiliate, your time is really the, the biggest, most expensive commodity. And so we are a traditional paid search agency, and we, we spend people money in, in a traditional manner where they have goals and we meet them, we build campaigns out, and we get paid 15% of our media spend. That's the standard rate. Um, and that's low risk. When you spend someone's money and you get 15% of it, you're never gonna lose that money. As an affiliate, you have every opportunity to make zero dollars and to spend a lot of money. So it's the more aggressive version of, of marketing. That being said, there's potential for bigger upside. If you can optimize down and can drive high quality and you can make sure that you have run a tight chip, you have that bigger upside. 
So when we're thinking about how we're going to spend our dollars, when we're going to think about how we're spending our time, if we're not getting a 15% return on our dollar spend on everything, you know, that's the, that should be that minimum thing. We're doing something wrong if the campaigns that we're building out. And we have to think about this in aggregate too because when you test out things, the majority of the things you test as an affiliate are going to fail. And that's just something that I expect. When I put something out there, I tell people, you know, I'm going to lose money at the beginning when I start working with you because I'm going to want to spend a bunch of money to test a bunch of things out to see what works. And they, we were talking about this earlier. It's like I'm either really bad at what I do or I'm just willing to find out where I'm really good. And I'd like to think in the long run that we're just willing to find out where we're really good and test that out so that we have that highest ROI and it's dialed in. And Jeremy, you've been promoting Paper Call for a little over a year now. Uh, what percentage of your business would you say uh, Paper Call represents? Uh, yeah, we've been doing this now for about a year or so. And actually, uh, just as of last July, it's actually just under 30% of our revenue already because we've really embraced the Paper Call platform and how well it works. And uh, it's interesting. We were talking a lot today about $400 for a sale. I mean, that's a lot of money. There, our biggest, most successful programs actually pay a fraction of that, like eight or ten dollars a sale, and uh, we just get a lot of volume, and the customers are very happy with us because we give them a lot of quality volume. So, I just want to mention that because you hear four hundred dollars, and it's like, oh, well, we can't do that. So, um, and then as far as results, we do a lot of uh, keyword tracking, which kind of like pay per click. We do keyword tracking per call. So we actually know which keyword drove which phone call. And either for our sites, we have a couple of sites as well, we could use those terms for SEO. Otherwise, we can decide which keywords are more valuable and promote accordingly. And uh, let's see. And yeah. one, one, one good thing to note here, too, is if you start working with um, guys like uh, Jeremy and Don, this is uh, something that a lot of internal um, advertising marketing departments just aren't doing. They don't necessarily have access to trackable phone numbers, although they can get them <laughs> I know <what> <clears throat> through CJ. <clears throat> so, uh, but should, should you be interested in doing that, this is one of the things where as part of your overall mobile strategy, you know, you can essentially add an extra pair of very knowledgeable hands um, to your program very simply. You know, obviously you need to convince them that it's a good payout. Uh, and, and that you've got a good product, Don didn't like the psychics piece, so don't try and sell them on that one. But, um, but you know, when you can get these guys to work on your program, you've added a whole you know, couple of heads on your marketing department to be able to get out there and drive new revenue in a mobile fashion. And one that's not just throwing money away um, on, you know, hey, we bought a million banner views on um, iAds or something like that. This is, you know, yes, we are definitely getting calls off of that. One of the most surprising things as an affiliate of what I didn't expect to tag into as much as we do is the analytics part of it, the statistics. So in the back end, when you're a publisher and you're driving calls, it kind of comes in as line items. And there's a phone number from a certain um, geographic area comes in, and it comes in as a time duration, that area came in, and whether it was a landline or mobile. And we didn't expect to be looking at what cities are popular with this? You know, what time duration? What's that mean? What's that mean if we're driving? If we're driving, most of our calls are over 30 minutes, or the most of them are 15 seconds. We can immediately you say something's broken with this piece of media. Cancel this. Move this over here. Let's build out another campaign that's geo-targeted. You know, you can do callouts for the city. You can call out um, specifically for the user you think you have there, and also landlines versus mobile. If you have 100% mobile, then you're not going to worry about then building out additional stuff that's going to hit people with landlines, you know, maybe, or maybe you're feeling that, okay, we need to figure out how we can diversify here so all our eggs are not in one basket. But having those stats, it's insight that before we didn't even know that we were driving calls or sales to these phone numbers. Now I know everything about those phone calls. Um, it, it, it's a great, it's a great uh, peek behind the curtain to see how the Wizard, is, the Wizard of Oz is pulling the handles. Yep. You know, clicks online typically convert one to three uh, percent into sales. What are you seeing uh, for the calls that you're driving? So 
uh, somewhere between uh, 20 uh, 20 percent or 50 percent I mean it, it depends it, it could be it could be lower or higher depending on the traffic you you get um, but typically what we're finding is that if you have a click and you have a call as options you always want to drive the call the call is a higher value ROI and we take our creative and web page design accordingly. We always are going to feature a phone number yeah, the, if it's an option. I mean, the, the, the stats on that are absolutely accurate, you know, in terms of, you know, and that's from the call being placed to a sale happening or a payable event happening to the publisher. I mean, it's very, very substantial in terms of uh, a conversion piece. And, you know, to his point about wanting to drive it, you've got someone on the other end of the phone upselling. All the, you know, people who work at call centers are paid to get more money out of people. That's a successful call center person. So um, when you've got those, you can imagine that the average order value is going to increase, and it does. It's on average probably one and a half to two times uh, as large as it is if you're going through an online form. So uh, th there's a ton of benefit from, from that perspective as well, driving bigger ticket, bigger value items than average. So talking a little bit more specifically about some of the stats that advertisers within your network are experiencing, uh, volume of calls, number of publishers per program, uh, what, are you, what are you seeing there, average payouts? It varies, you know, some, some advertisers are obviously more conservative and have fewer relationships that they want to manage, and, uh, but some we have, you know, thousands of, of uh, people who are active in a particular program, they're, they're very substantially sized. Uh, some of these affiliates are driving and have the ability to drive thousands of calls per day, um, which you know uh, is probably overwhelming to a small local business, but to someone with a couple of call centers around the U.S., uh, that's almost a necessity uh, to keep their workforce busy uh, all day. Certainly, I know I've talked to uh, different marketers um, at, uh, who run call centers, and you know when they're not getting enough call volume, they start to worry. They're losing money because they're paying these people. So they need to keep those uh, call volumes coming in. Uh, you know, Google uh, recently put out some stats, I think, and it's fun to kind of see them embracing uh, calls and mobile a little bit more aggressively. Uh, we saw stats that they've got over 500,000, I think, uh, uh, businesses that are using uh, their uh, click-to-call on, on mobile. Uh, but one of the other more interesting stats that may not be in, as intuitive is uh, when phone numbers are placed in the media, uh, the click-through rates on those banners or search placements are going up as well. Uh, Google reported, I think, 5 to 30 percent increase in, uh, in click-through rate ju just by having the presence of a phone number uh, there. Uh, we're pretty consistently hearing about in that 10 to 12 percent uh, range uh, that, as well. That you know that that mimics exactly um, what landing pages. You know when people start incorporating phone numbers on landing pages, the kind of impact that that had on that as well. So, great. Well, uh, in terms of uh, how to get started, uh, how uh, how do you recommend that the folks in the audience that haven't uh, yet started running paper call campaigns. Did you have that 800 number for CJ <laughs> to put up? Um, uh, well, yeah, no, I mean, obviously I'm biased um, since I work at CJ and run the paper call uh, team, but we have a great team and we're ready to help anyone who wants to get tested on this, um, get it going, and I'm very enthusiastic about it as uh, some of my advertisers probably get tired of listening to me talk about how effective paper call is. Um, yeah, and actually, Commission Junction just recently uh, made it even a little bit more accessible. They just integrated a full tab within their interface, so it's very easy to click and get started if you've already got an account. Not only that, but you can do it in multiple countries now. We're, uh, we're live in the UK. So uh, CJ's definitely made an investment here, and, um, and we are uh, really excited. So whether you're a publisher or an advertiser and you need to get started, we, our team would love to help you out. J Jeremy, what, uh, what helpful hints do you have? Uh, the main thing is find a vertical that you know already. Uh, just for obvious reasons, you can parlay that into a paper call and then learn how that system works with something you're familiar with. And if there's a company that, as an, again, as an uh, affiliate, if there's a company you work with who does not have a program, give them a call and just tell them about it. And I believe it's not, a, there's a, I believe there's no fee, but I'm not sure about that. But you go ahead and tell them there's no fee. That's I fine. think it's free of charge completely. No. So, um, I heard that somewhere. Anyhow, um, just talk to them and just let them know what's going on and, and let them know that it's easy and 
it can work and you know, tell them you want to be the first person to work with and work with no one else, so they just choose you only. And I kind of get them out there and then get used to it and get their feet wet that way. So that's what we do. So I think that it really comes down to the business model that the publishers are going to promote. I think now is the time that new business models get invented when there's a, a new effective way of tracking. So the call, the ring opportunities have opened up a bunch of new vistas. You know, I was joking about doing outdoor ads. There's no reason that uh, you couldn't run a page in every print magazine in the United States and see which had positive ROI. There, I mean, besides the actual um, time and energy and money that go into it, when you have 100% cell phone coverage almost, but only 78% of people have internet access, there's new customers out there. And so I think that there are advertisers that you'll be able to find. But I think for publishers, at least, and I'm biased because I am a publisher, coming up with these new uh, distribution models with these new technologies, this is the part where you can hit the ground running. I think that um, somebody in this room probably will come up with a, a much better idea than I've had, and, and it will make a bunch of money. And that's, that's the exciting part about it, is starting something fresh, starting something new, being able to track these uh, through this separate channel. Great. Well, I think we're going to go into a little bit more Q&A here from, uh, from the, the audience. Uh, if anybody's got any questions, uh, please raise your hand. Good. Sure. Uh, the question, just uh, in case you can hear, is um, um, advertisers' concern about, uh, relative to advertiser concern about uh, traffic, uh, phone calls that are coming in that are unqualified. Um, and certainly that does happen. And we find that it happens most frequently when the advertiser uh, maybe doesn't listen fully uh, on, uh, on how we sort of want to set the campaign up initially. Uh, and it usually happens closer to the beginning of a particular advertiser's uh, campaign. Um, so generally what we do is we look at the calls that are coming in and we do a little, you know, um, quick gut check on where those are coming from. Uh, certainly uh, there are many different technology, you know, there are many different pieces that you can do to help uh, qualify those. Could be, could be time of day, maybe too many are coming in after hours, could be geo-targeting, could be um, just having them walk through a certain set of key presses so that you're driving people who are calling in for customer service related issues over to the customer service team, which maybe isn't creating a payable sale. Um, so once, once you can set that up and you sort of accurately uh, do that, most of those questions are addressed. And you know, the, other, the other piece to that is it's really easy from CJ's perspective to go in and take a look at publishers. And, w and if they have a terrible conversion rate um, on that, w we obviously make outreach to those guys and find out well, you know, how are they driving these calls? Why are they driving so many calls that aren't converting into payable events? Um, we certainly have an interest in, in making optimizing that so they have fewer. So it, it can happen, and I'm sure it will continue to happen, but really the way we view it is uh, we'd rather have to tone those down and tweak them a little bit more rather than not get the calls at all. And I'd say from what we see, uh, I'd say 75 plus percent of advertiser programs that are running are doing some means of qualifying that call before it hits the call center agent. Uh, so they're putting, putting those IVRs in place to, to make sure that those low-quality calls aren't tying up agent resource time. Yeah. Yes? How, how do you uh, run ads in mobile? Do you send them out through text, or is there a way to do graphic ads? And are there any special permissions you need as far as uh, getting permission to send the ads out? Like if we start gathering cell phones that you've been doing for other reasons, can we start hitting them with ads right now? Sure. I, I, let me just address that last piece, and and you know from CJ's perspective as a network, disclosure is you know the most important thing. So um, you know as long as the advertiser understands how you're generating the traffic um, and approves of it, I think that's generally obviously there are some cases that we say no to at all times, but um, um, but in general disclosure is really the most important piece in how you do that. As to the other part, I'll let them. 
And, and when those campaigns are being set up by the advertiser, they can specify which promotional methods they want to allow for the campaign. So when publishers uh, are signing up to promote those offers, uh, they can see what types of restrictions are in place, and the advertiser also gets a sense of uh, the profile on the application that gets submitted. Yeah, and then we just, like for example, with Google, we just go through and we'll target display or text ads within mobile search or content as well. In addition, there's also uh, mobile display networks where you've probably played a game or had an application where you see a banner will show up in the middle of it. And those display ads are bought by somebody, and that could be you. Don, Don Badford, uh, hippo farm? Hippo My hippo answer. farm. Yeah, yeah, there's a whole story behind why I have a hippo, but that's yeah. a side story. <clears throat> yeah, we, push those ads? Can you push graphic ads like at NetS and that's to your buddy? So just, just to be clear, I don't want to say that it's completely open if you want to do SMS. Just, just for just so everybody knows, SMS is like email, and you must have permission to send it. So it's, op, it's an opt-in thing. It's not an opt-out thing. So uh, we can talk about it offline, but if you're going to do any SMS, um, just let your users know that you're, you have intention of sending them back a thing. And typically, if you're going to do SMS, you would text them the phone number and call off that. I would not. You're going to have lower delivery rates trying to do anything else. Yeah, I'd say what we see in mobile is kind of four different types of promotions. Uh, text and SMS is, is one of those. Uh, display. Uh, there are some publishers out there, uh, in addition to working through some of the mobile display networks and running inventory that way, uh, that also that have apps that are running uh, on the phone where they're actually able to pop content to their users. Uh, we see more of the in-app type of uh, advertising uh, as well, uh, but I'd say probably from a quality and volume standpoint, where we're probably seeing the most traction is through uh, through mobile search. Yes. You mentioned uh, push to call on mobile performing really well. Um, but what about on an iPad or uh, a traditional website, giving the ability to where someone clicks an offer, enters their phone number, and then you do the three way call routing? Is anybody trying any, anything like that? Or what is that, the uh, responses to those kinds of practices? It, it's, a, it's a great question. And that's uh, kind of where uh, pay per call originally started in, in, the, uh, in the marketplace probably about four or five years ago, uh, was through more of that form based uh, submission. And uh, when we set out to build the technology platform that we did, uh, we, we got a lot of feedback and did a lot of research on how that experience was working. Uh, and it was, it was a little broken. Uh, to, you know, going through the extra work as a consumer to click a button, figure out which phone you want to be called back at, when you want to be called, is it too late, am I going to wake up the kids when they call, uh, fat fingering in numbers and then wondering why the call didn't actually uh, make it to them. It was a bit of a broken experience. So uh, we actually designed the technology around issuing those unique phone numbers, which are much more intuitive for customers to be able to see that number and either dial it directly or click, click on it to place the phone call. Um, with those unique phone numbers, are you running into situations where you want more phone numbers in order to be able to get the kind of analytics that you're usually able to get with traditional PPC advertising? I, I think, in, in Don, Don mentioned earlier, yeah, I, I think the, the inventory around phone numbers to do deeper analytics uh, as long as uh, there's, there's good volume being generated from those placements, uh, you're able to get those pretty easily from the platform. And, and that actually is both from the advertiser and the publisher side. So, you know, on the advertiser side, they can uh, get it uh, with that. You can do it with SEM. You can do it with loyalty in a similar fashion to the way that uh, SEM. So if you have a, a user base that you uh, keep track of these sort of things for uh, and that your advertisers are copacetic with, uh, having loyalty be a portion of their promotion, then there's ways to do that as well. Any other questions? No? There right. we go. We've, we've seen we've seen different I mean uh, certainly local phone numbers depending on what you're looking for for like a service you know I, I had that same uh, 
uh, issue where we had a clogged drain at the house. And you know, you go on and you look online. Certainly, people like Service Magic and other people are using local numbers to drive calls to a national uh, um, base. And, it, and and so, as a user, you, you know, you're you think you're getting a local person. You're really getting a national uh, chain. So that is, you know, certainly effective to a certain degree uh, for that sort of uh, promotion. Uh, we most of the phone numbers that are issued are toll-free uh, numbers, uh, but you can through the platform request local numbers if you've got a specific use for them. Yeah. Any any other questions? And, and just to that point on the local stuff, we have a lot of local and regional um, players. So um, there's a lot of uh, I, I can think of uh, solar panels, for example. They're selling, and insurance uh, is uh, state by state usually. Um, and so those, those can be really great opportunities to do that sort of marketing uh, as well. Um, there's, there's, there's a lot of good local marketing. It is nice to have the rollout, uh, like Jeremy was saying, to be able to roll out uh, to the entire country. Uh, but certainly there are ones that uh, are much more focused on a regional or local basis that have a lot of potential and have done very well, certainly for CJ. Yep. Call performance marketing and paper call are still relatively new to uh, the affiliate landscape here. Uh, there's, there's lots of opportunity. Uh, there's lots of growth that we're seeing uh, in the space. I think Dan had, had mentioned that just in uh, the last year, campaigns on the Commission Junction Network have tripled, I think you said? Yeah, advertiser campaigns have tripled in the last year, and publishers have doubled. Yeah, so it, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of growth, and it's, uh, we don't see it slowing down, actually. We actually see it accelerating. So. And, and in many ways, for publishers looking for uh, different types of business models and way to diversify uh, what they're doing, uh, we're seeing um, a lot more uh, publishers branching out and, and testing out new technologies. It's, it's very easy to get started. Um, but uh, I want to thank everybody for participating in the panel. Thanks for coming out uh, and, and listening. And if you've got any uh, questions that we can help uh, answer, uh, please come see us up here. There's some feedback forms uh, as well. If you get a chance to, to fill those out and drop them off uh, on the way out, that would be great. Thank you. Thanks.